Welcome back everybody to the GKA News Show. I'm Joe Siashla and let's find out what has been going on in the world of kite surfing last month with this show's highlights. Starting off with the recap of the Alula all-time big air GKA distance battle. We move on to the event in Germany for the GK Kitesurf World Cup in Silt, Germany. The upcoming event on tour, the GK Kitesurf World Cup in Hedersander, Denmark. We go down to Mexico with the team from F1 for the 15th anniversary of the Bandit Delta Shape Sea Kite. And then let's check out what has been going on in the world of kite surfing with the GKA news flashes. Hey guys, what's happening? It's uh, Willow here. I uh, just wanted to let you know the recent challenge that I've set myself on at the moment. During the past month, we celebrated the Alula all-time Big Air GK distance battle. This new online format meant that riders could submit their videos over a space of two months, over 20 years of kiteboarding, and we had more than 100 videos. Riders from the past, present, and future of the sport all got together under one community, and it was really great to see the vibes in amongst this competition. Coming off with the win on the strapless side, we had Ayrton Cossolino and Capucin Delanoi. On the men's twin tip, we had Jesse Richmond, and on the girls, we had Angeli Bouillot. And then on the Hydrofall Freestyle, we had Charles Bordel. What a day here on the island of Zilt. It's been 25 to 30 knots pumping the whole day. Really tough and challenging conditions, but our riders have been able to conquer these conditions and battle it out here on the North Sea in Germany. In the next section, we're going to talk about the event that just happened, the GK Kitesurf World Cup in Silt, Germany. But before we go into the action, let's grab a few words from our event organizer. My name is Matthias Neumann. I'm uh, CEO of ACT Agency. This is the organizing uh, company of the Land Rover Kitesurf uh, World Cup on Silt. Yes, actually, I have been organizing lifestyle water sport events till 1990, and it's very simple. It's the love of, of, of the sport. I love kite surfing, I love windsurfing, I love surfing, SUP, and all of that. This is the, the, the motivation from, from, from inside. And uh, since, since five years, we kind of linked it uh, to the whole nature, uh, to the whole nature protection topic, to the climate protection uh, topic. And this makes it even bigger, this intrinsic motivation. I personally would like to have more manufacturers on board, that we have the testing, we're gonna get the, the, the scene, the fans here. I would like to see some foiling over here to, to have some more disciplines. And it's like, focusing the sportive part, but make the sportive part bigger. Great to catch up with our event organizer and get all the in-depth and how hard it is to put on such a successful event like Silt in Germany. Joining me in the studio, I have this youngster here, Kiko Roy from Spain. Kiko, how's it going? Hello, Joe. Thanks so much for inviting me. So how was Silt? You were there, conditions looked tough, there was waves, there was wind. Man, did it look chilly. It was super good. We have super good windy, was super strong and it was super cold. <laughs> it did look cold. One of the things we've noticed, obviously it's been almost a year and a half since Cabo Verde that you guys have had a kite surfing event. The level has skyrocketed. Yes, the level now changed uh, all because now the guys are sending big loops. Like we are not going like uh, tricks, super technical tricks. We are going now for big loops and hard, hard landings. <laughs> One of the things we did see in Silt also is this place is known for its waves and its windy conditions. So it was a mixed format, meaning that you had two jumps and two waves, am I correct? Yes, it was like this. And as you see in the podium, it becomes the most complete rider. The riders can take so much wave and big, and big waves and the riders can do big tricks. We started from the men's quarterfinals with Pedro, James and Ayrton dominating their heats with huge aerials, off the lips and massive kite loops. In the first heat of the men's semi-finals we had an intense heat between legendary Ayrton Cozzolino and the Brazilian Pedro Matos. Both were going sky high, pulling off similar repertoire of tricks, 
but you could really see that Pedro was using his surf knowledge in these challenging conditions, allowing him to win by a small margin over Cozzolino. The spectators were eager and waiting for the ultimate showdown to begin. James Carew continued to reach new heights and took the win here in Zilt. Second place went to Pedro Matos and third to Ayrton Cozzolino. Yeah, today's a big step in the right direction. Um, it's not over yet, there's some more heat, some more comps to go, but I'm, I'm stoked. Start the, start the Euro first event, get it first. So, I mean, I've been fighting hard, I've been training a lot, and it's a big relief. It feels good to be, be on top. On the woman's side, Kaposin dominated her final heat against her opponent, Kerry Robert. Delanois landed her signature double front roll in her heat. This is the first time a woman has landed this trick in competition. So Kaposin from France took first place, Kerry Roberts was second, and Charlotte Carpentier was third. Well, I'm so happy, I'm so stoked. I've been training since more than a year, every day in freestyle, and um, yeah, being winning the seven is quite so cool. After two days of intense action, we've crowned our champions of Zilt. Wow, Silt really delivered the goods. We had waves, we had wind, we had big air, and we had innovation. Really impressive to see how James Carew and Capozin Delanoy coming out on top. Man, are they pushing the bar when it comes to level. Yeah, Capozin and James are sending so much. So, as you see, they take the win. I also really can't wait. The next event, for the first time on the calendar, we are gonna move over to Denmark for the GK Kitesurf World Cup in Hidesander. This place is known for its waves. It's also Northwind European. Kiko, what do you expect? Yeah, looking the forecast there, there's looking coming waves. So hopefully we have good kickers and more action in the waves. Well, absolutely can't wait to see more action. And let's check out a little bit about this new event location. I'm Catherine, I'm the event manager here in Denmark for the GKA Kitesurf World Cup. The Kitesurf World Cup is going to be a part of the Waters Festival. A festival where we gather up to 2,000 people entering into our different activities. Wow, I really can't wait, Kiko, to get to Hither Sander. Looks like a really nice place, and like we mentioned before, there's waves, it's, a, you know, it's got that surfy feel to it. I think we're gonna have another great event. Let's not forget that for this season, to crown the world champion, we are gonna be taking the Cabo Verde event from last season and the three events from this season. So Germany, Denmark, and Morocco. And from those four events, it means that each rider will be able to discard their worst results. So four events, one discard. Who do you reckon is gonna come out on top? This year is gonna be difficult, but I think James is close to the, to the top. And on the girl side? Capuccini is rocking, but as you see, it's coming also at Wave 7, so there is a super good wave, uh, girl taking Wave, so it's gonna be hard also. Absolutely, this is what the GKA is looking for, the most complete male and female rider. Kiko, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope to see you very soon climbing up that podium. Thanks so much, Joe, and thanks so much, everybody. In this next section, we catch up with the F1 team who went all the way down to Mexico for the 15th anniversary of the Bandit Delta Shape Sea Kite.
So it's that time of the day to find out what has been happening in the world of kite surfing with the GK news flashes. We move over to Greece, a summer hotspot for freestylers and big air riders like Val Garat, Alex Pastor, and Aaron Hadlow. And Willow River Tonkins is running 250 kilometers in August to raise funds for organizations in South Africa to help kids go to school. Hey guys, what's happening? It's uh, Willow here. I uh, just wanted to let you know the recent challenge that I've set myself on at the moment um, for the entire month of August. Um, I'll be raising funds for uh, an organization in South Africa that are helping kids go to school. Um, and for me, as I believe, education is one of the most important things in life. I found it uh, really in my heart to, to help raise funds, especially during these difficult times for these kids in South Africa. So I'll be running every single day for at least 8.3 kilometers, which is a total of 58 kilometers a week and 250 kilometers in a month. I think the most I've ever done in a month is 100 kilometers so it's going to be a big challenge i'd really appreciate it and i'd love you guys support if you'll be able to donate it only takes around 10 euros or 160 rand to send one kid to school for at least one month so it would be really awesome if you guys can get on board this mission with me to help send these kids to school start changing people's lives Another action-packed month in the world of kite surfing, and I can't wait to see the events to come. Make sure to follow us on all our social media channels to stay up to date. I'm Josie Ashler, until next time.